our last speakers in the second panel is Buja, which I thought was Bula, but it's Buja. Um, Buja is a landscape architecture and urban planning office based in Buenos Aires. Um, during the last nine years, they have been developing landscape projects and investigations in the city, both in the public and the private fields. Uh, following this path, the office has set up a new point of view of the profession, redefining and breaking the limits of the discipline according to contemporary and comprehensive ideas. During the last year, the office has decided to return to the exploration of the South American territory, recognizing its structure and the landscape behavior under a holistic intellectual growth to rethink, uh, sorry, under a holistic view that incorporates man and nature as part of a whole. This new approach allowed an intellectual growth to rethink actual territorial issues regarding the environment and infrastructure. With this holistic view, Buja is producing practical and theoretical knowledge about the discipline that has been left up, uh, that has uh, been lacking in the actual and academic discussion in the recent years. Um, so please welcome uh, Buja. Well, hi, everybody. Uh, first of all, thanks uh, to the organization for this invitation. It's a pleasure for us to be sharing this table with many friends and colleagues. We designed this presentation in two parts. Uh, the first one is a conceptual introduction. And the second one is the project. Well, I'm going to start. Uh, we're Busha, uh, Ana Garcia Ricci, Lucier Dizone, a great team sitting down there and who's speaking. We are founders of this landscape architecture and urban planning firm based in Buenos Aires and born nine years ago. We are a part of the new generation of landscape architects in Argentina graduated from the University of Buenos Aires which its academic program is conceived by mixing two traditional and opposite schools, the architecture and urbanism with the natural sciences. Busha is part of this hybrid between nature and culture. This interdisciplinary vision allowed to start rethinking the discipline in the local scene focus in Buenos Aires and later on the rest of the region. Our office uh, works in two facilities devices the territorial base, BT, where we developed large scale and urban projects, and the landscape base, BP, where we elaborate the landscape architecture projects in the city. Our workforce is built by landscape architects and architects, and on a second ring, a diverse group of consultants, such as hydrological engineers, structural engineers, urban planners, ecologists, commercial developers, and social workers. With this flexible structure, we've been uh, working for the last years in many collaborative structures across different disciplines, exploring relations between culture and nature in South America, thinking uh, integrated solutions for the existing cities and rethinking new ways for building cities in this territory. The local practice in Argentina is pretty much young, having its climax on the first decades of the 20th century and suffering an intellectual and projective emptiness during the rest part of this century. This hybrid vision allows us to explore the time scale on landscape, the natural processes, and to reread the local discipline history, bringing it up to date. We understand South America as a whole integrated ecosystem a complex and dynamic system made by different landscape units and dynamics stronger than the political boundaries. This mapping is for us our base roadmap by entering to a region or project, the natural infrastructure. We understand this nature and environmental resources as the great value of the region and the global positioning. Starting from the first populations in South America, like the Guarani territory, which understands the Tecopora as a way of living with the river flows and leaving no footprint. This culture conceives the water structure, rivers and aquifers, uh, and aquifers as a way of living in the land, from Bolivia and Brazil up to the Rio de la Plata. The Jesuits' maps translate the original landscape and cultures into a productive territorial company by reading the landscape. 
The European expeditions in South America lands like Humboldt and Darwin introduces the idea of ecology and cosmos, where all the parts of the biosphere are connected some way. His Argentinian disciple, Florentino Meguino, and with his Ameguino project, introduces the idea of regulating the flooding periods by creating artificial retention ponds all along the Salada River, stimulating the water as a connection way and creating a han, an hydrological infrastructure inspired in the Ranqueles culture, where we're rethinking this idea on an, an investigation project called Water Cities. Our local discipline history starts with Sarmiento and follows with the great characters as Charles Tice and Benito Carrasco. Tice, during the last uh, decades of the 19th century, works on many different scale projects. We are interested on the ones that works uh, with the landscape as a new way of urbanism. The Mendoza City, the project for Cataratas de Iguazú Natural Park, and the Buenos Aires Botanical Garden are part of this heritage. Thais starts exploring the natural pieces by mixing his European culture in the local landscape. At last, this idea of holistic vision is conceived by the landscape ecology theory where man is part of a whole dynamic system where microscope and telescope are part of the same knowledge research. The ecoregions are uh, the map for the understanding of the Argentinian territory based on the relationships between flora, fauna, and man. This model uh, allows us to explore many different types of projects in Argentina, Uruguay, and Bolivia, including investigations, domestic projects, urban public spaces, infrastructure, and cities planning. Okay, so now in the second part of our talk, I'm gonna guide you through a special project that we are still working on. It is called Faros La Reserva, and it's a master plan, plan stage project for which we teamed up with architects Claudio Ferrari, Nadia Franco, and Martin Fernandez de Lema to rethink a new urban development close to Santa Cruz de la Sierra city in Bolivia. It is very exciting for us to work on a project within Latin American territory and to expand our own frontiers of action. The site is located geographically in the center of South America. On a macro scale and simplifying its complexity, we can say that Bolivia contains two very strong landscape units, the Altiplano and the Lowlands. These landscape units' characteristics built and defined the original cultures and their visions of the world, understanding the world. The mountain range Kosha culture and the Waranese culture associated to water. In other words, these two ecoregions are the great landscape that models not only the ways in which nature evolved, but also the human culture. The specific site in which we are working is located in the transition of these two cultures, of these two uh, landscapes. The city of Santa Cruz has affirmed itself as a pillar of a national economy of Bolivia, being the department with the greatest contribution to national product and exports in addition to becoming the most populated and the recipient of the highest flow of internal migration. It is also part of the future Bioceanic Corridor. The site comprises 600 hectares that respond to the urban growth of the city of Santa Cruz de la Sierra to the west, where the crossing of the Pirae River implied a geographical difficulty and a barrier for continuing the extension of the original city rings. This context resulted in the expansion of the city in a new urban typology of residential <laughs> private neighborhoods outside the traditional margins of the rings. Zooming into our plot, we can see that it is surrounded by two rivers, the River La Miel and the River Tocotocal, and it is located between the old city and the Amboró National Park that functions as a great source of biodiversity for the area. The client already had a master plan project for the area, but lacked commercial success, and it did not verify with the territory. So the request was to rethink the development with the condition to stick to plot dimensions and densities that were already approved by the city of Porongo. Faced with this, 
we set out to start working with the premise to understand first the dynamics of the landscape, recognizing that it was its greatest potential and a key success factor. These are some pictures from our first visit to the site where you can appreciate the exuberance of the flora, the diversity of the landscape, the strength of the canyons, and the potential of the natural territory originated in the Precambrian era. We analyzed the complexity of the territory, the flows and dynamics, the hydrological network, the topographical system, and we classified different ecotopes as relatively homogeneous landscape units. Once we understood the heterogeneous land with its clusters of, of interacting ecosystems, we began to design. The proposed master plan is based on six neighborhood units, which respond to the different ecotopes we classified, paired into. The natural logic defines their identity and moreover, the architectural language, materiality, programs and the conditions of habitability too. We sought to reduce to the maximum the infrastructure work, such as movement of soil, streets, constructions, and facilities, proposing an energy saving engineering in terms of managing fluids by gravity. A very efficient subdivision of plots depending on the topography, the natural ambient and the views. We designed a network of ecological corridors to avoid disconnecting what were already flows of interaction. In order to achieve this, we maintained large intact areas as natural reserves, fulfilling a buffer zone role. A buffer zone is a source that provides diversity to the habitat and facilitates the dispersal of the offspring of flora and fauna through ecological corridors. This network of corridors is present throughout the whole urbanization. Buffers are pieces of landscape that constitute a way for the conservation of the biodiversity, and at the same time, they form a device to solve the limits of each neighborhood. Buffers incorporate the security system, a recreational walking circuit, and a shelter, the compact sewage treatment plants. We added a series of social programs for the new community and areas open to the general public. We developed projects such as the riverfront, natural reserves with educational trekking trails, viewpoints, visitor centers, and iconic lighthouses. A complementary bunch of urban equipment areas proposed along the Loop Boulevard, such as sport clubs, commercial and educational facilities, a research program, and a civic center. A family of architectural and urban buildings areas proposed on each private neighborhood, entrance gates, clubhouses, bus stops, public spaces, and iconic lighthouses. The project seeks to minimize environmental impact. We consider the full range of systems comprising the site's ecology and dynamics to design a new habitat in which nature and culture are interrelated. It is a proposal to inhabit the territory under an integrated vision of landscape and urbanism. Thank you. Well, at last, uh, we would like to present SCAPE. SCAPE is, for us, our experimental and educational program where we invite many characters from different disciplines the object of ESCAPE is to expand our vision and feed up our knowledge. So, thank you.